I believe that today's hearing is long overdue. Day after day, our nation's tribal communities are suffering terrible inequalities, unequal access to safe drinking water, unreliable access to the energy grid, little or no broadband connectivity, unreliable funding from the federal government and other systematic problems that have created unnecessary hardship and turmoil. And now COVID-19 is exacerbating many of these long existing problems. More than one third of tribal members are at high risk of serious COVID-19 complications due to underlying health factors. And Navajo Nation has seen higher infection rates than those in Wuhan, China during the peak of the pandemic. Despite this stark reality of the impact of COVID-19 on tribal communities, we've heard repeatedly about the struggles of tribal communities in accessing the personal protective equipment and testing needed to protect against COVID-19. As this pandemic rages on and COVID-19 cases continue to rise in many areas of the country, access to PPE and testing, as well as access to proper sanitation and well-equipped health facilities will be critical to flattening the curve for tribal communities. And our tribal communities deserve better. That's why we're here to listen to representatives of tribal governments and organizations that we, so we can ensure Congress meets its obligations to tribal governments and communities. While I'd like to believe that we have made incremental improvements for tribes over the years, it's clear that not enough has been accomplished. In the area of healthcare, as I noted, tribal communities experience greater health disparities compared to other groups, which increases their risk of hospitalization due to COVID-19 and associated complications. We have to tackle the fact that the Indian Health Service remains chronically underfunded. It's impossible for IHS to meet the healthcare needs of tribal members, whether in a pandemic or not, without sufficient and stable resources, which has contributed to outdated infrastructure and medical equipment. And while Congress has provided increased resources to IHS in recent coronavirus packages, the administration has failed to get this money to tribal communities swiftly, putting tribal members further at a disadvantage in receiving the testing, PPE, and healthcare access they need in order to respond to COVID-19. The Moving Forward Act includes $5 billion for IHS and tribal recipients for the construction and renovations of hospitals and outpatient care facilities. I also look forward to hearing about what the federal government can do to make sure all tribal communities have access to high-speed internet service. Uh, as you know, the pandemic has driven home how internet connectivity is essential for everyone. Telehealth services are vitally special in remote areas. Distance learning is the only option for many, and telework and e-commerce are growing in importance. Yet for all its benefits, two-thirds of people living on rural tribal lands have no internet connectivity, which I think is a disgrace. And fortunately, the Moving Forward Act also brings more connectivity to tribal households by providing $80 billion for broadband deployment projects. Um, electricity and water access on tribal lands also continues to be a major issue, and tribal households are less likely to have access to indoor plumbing and a safe water supply. And the Moving Forward Act addresses these issues by investing $47 billion in drinking water, including the Indian Reservation Drinking Water Program, and $50 million to improve tribal communities' access to affordable and reliable energy sources. So I just want to say that uh, we would like to bring more renewable or other energy production to tribes and have to look forward to ways to encourage uh, moving in that direction. 